Hey guys, Lizard Lee here for Four Heavenly Beasts, day 64. So that is the progress from day 63. I'm hoping to get a lot more done. But honestly, like if you look at it and you can see where all of the um, the Kreenic thread is, I've gotten quite a bit of this page done actually. Um, I slept horribly last night. I, I I can hear it in my voice. I don't know if you guys can. I woke up at like 1.30 in a cold sweat. No idea what I was dreaming about, but it took me forever to fall back to sleep. David didn't sleep well, so then I also didn't sleep well. But I already wasn't sleeping well, so I don't know if that made a difference. <laughs> um, I'm not having any allergy issues right now, so I hope it stays that way. It would be great. Yeah. I'm gonna go cross-stitch now. <laughs> I'm gonna start recording right now because you said you were ready. You're not, but you said you were. I am. Ready. So what are we talking about? You keep cutting me off. I didn't cut you off. You weren't speaking. It's your choice between Dungeons and Dragons, John Wick Four. Dude, I loved the Dungeons and Dragons movie. We could absolutely talk about that for thirty minutes. Okay. That movie was spectacular. Are you hundred percent sure we haven't talked about it already? Yes. Hundred percent. Yes. I feel like I have. That's because you tell everyone. About That's it. true. I have told literally everyone in my family everything about this movie because it's so good. Like, I think. No, in fact, I know. I know you can enjoy this movie without having played Dungeons and Dragons before. My mom played in like the 80s. My mom. And hasn't played it. since and enjoyed it. My dad and my brother have never played and still enjoyed it. Your mom doesn't play, right? She's never played? No. no. And she enjoyed it. Like, it was just a good movie. It could have been called, like, Fantasy and Dragons or something. Like, it didn't need to be called anything to actually do with D&D. &D because everything about D&D &D is, like, it's like a wink. There's never, I, I don't think there was ever a joke where it was, like, that was only funny to people who played D&D. Um, well, I mean, there's, like, little subtext you'll appreciate. Well, yeah, like I said, a wink. Well, no, I think, um, the dump stat, well, I mean, like, there's... No, that was a funny joke. No, I get you, I get you. Implying they're I... all stupid, because, yeah, like, especially because the bard was like, oh, yeah, I make plans. Yeah. And then the thing still walks by him because he's stupid. Yeah, but, I mean... Uh... I understood that on another level. Yes. But it was still funny on the level that you could understand I, I, it yes. at without knowing D&D. &D. Okay. I just, I was going to say, there's, um, crap, I can't think of it again. The... The Paladin? Are you talking about, are you thinking about side character, or? I don't remember now. <laughs> no, no, I tried to say it, I lost it. Point is, no, like, for the majority of the movie, all the jokes are funny, whether you play d d or not, because at the end of the day, it's, it's not told as if they're playing a D&D game. It's just a story set in the D&D world. In fact, bluntly, you can't play a game like that. There's a lot of things that the movie, I think, does better than the game because it acknowledges that these parts of the game are boring and it would be better if you could do A or B or C. Yeah, it's fully a uh, homebrew game if it yeah, is a game. <laughs> exactly. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of like little moments where you're like, oh, I get how this is them ruining the game and blah, 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 blah. But... Um, them ruining the game? Well, not ruining, but like ruining the current plan. For the oh, game. so now the DM or now the DM has to like. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> you know, else out. the st the walking stick suddenly magically being a portal Teleporter tool, thing, yeah. like to someone who's never played D and D. Oh, it's just okay. That's like silly writing. Whatever, fine. To anyone who's played D and D, they one hundred percent know that's because. They screwed up a puzzle that the DM thought they were supposed to be able to get, and they went, uh, crud, what's in their inventory? Hey, do, an do a check on that walking stick. That oh, was wow. 100% up until that point just a walking stick with no plans beyond that, and then became the single thing they needed to get across and happened to break the rest of the campaign. Like, that part was 
beautiful whether they intended it that way or not. And uh, that whole joke is something you'll only get if you play D&D, or at least are aware of D&D, you know? Whereas otherwise, just like, oh, sloppy writing, ha ha, the stick is a magic MacGuffin, cool. Like, no, legitimately, the that's the DM that. fixing the campaign because <laughs> some idiot wouldn't listen to his cool contrived puzzle and just screwed it up immediately. Like, it's a kindergarten level puzzle that they overthought and they screwed themselves out of it. <laughs> Uh, like, I, those kind of jokes were probably my favorite, like, uh, I know you loved the, the, um, graveyard scene. I thought it was funny, but it was not my favorite. My favorite part was at the end of the graveyard scene, where somebody was like, or I think it was the bard, he was like, yeah, well, I've never heard of this guy, you know, I don't know who he is, we'll never be able to find him, we're, you know, dead in the water. And then the, the druid's like, oh, no, I've heard of him, he's from blah, blah, blah. And the sorcerer's like, yeah, I've heard of him too. I, I heard he used to be here, but yeah, now he's at blah, blah, blah. And then the bard's just like, oh, well, no, no, that, that's crazy. And the barbarian's like, oh, no, yeah, no, I, I heard the same thing. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, everyone passed the history check yeah. except for the bard. Yeah. <laughs> like the freaking barbarian nat 20 that. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and that's the cool thing about it is it's a movie that works completely on if you've never, like, you know, if they dig this up 500 years from now and don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is, it'd still be a decent movie. But if you play the game, you get a whole bunch of subtext. Yeah, it, like, it's is, even more And it's funny. very cleverly handled subtext, because it's not like, wink, wink, nod, nod. It's, like, really, really subtle stuff. Um, but, yeah. I mean, it, it's just done well. Like, it, 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 I, can't, I can't put a word on it exactly, but, yeah, it just... There's a big difference between, like, having a bunch of inside jokes where if someone's not a part of it, you don't get it, and very subtly layering subtext to the scene where, like, yes, this scene is funny on its surface, and also if you understand the mechanics of how this game is played, you know what's going on, like, at the table for the people playing these characters, and how they're incredibly pissed they have to dig up yet another grave because someone can't ask questions correctly, <laughs> and their DM's a bit of a smartass. Oh, that was so good. I swear, the first preview I saw was for the graveyard scene, and I was like, oh my god, this is going to be a stupid movie, it's going to be horrible, I'm going to hate it. And then a bunch of reviews came out, and it was all positive, and I was like, no, this is for stupid people. <laughs> and then I saw the second preview, and the second one was so much better. And I was like, okay, the graveyard scene is just a one-off, I'm going to love this movie. And I didn't hate the graveyard scene, but I was still a little peeved at, like, he was, he did not figure out, like, I didn't ask him a question. Did I ask him a question? Yes. Uh, really? There's got to be a point when he realizes asking a question out loud, whether it's directed at the skeleton or not, the, silicon, the skeleton's going to answer him. He needs to put that together. But then again, it's kind of like this is the guy who was like, oh, yeah, we're going to go to plan B. No, we're going to go to plan C. Plan C is just plan A with this. Eh, plan A had some stink on it. We needed yeah. a new one. Yeah. Like... Yeah, he's not actually very smart. He also dumped it as a stat. Yeah. I don't care what information they released where they claimed, like, oh, yeah, this is for the movie. No, it wasn't. It was the dump stat for every single one of them, except for that wizard. <laughs> and I don't know if they even gave the stats for the wizard, but she's a wizard, so she had to have it as her best stat. It's D&D. &D. It's not Pathfinder. Um, but, oh my gosh, it was so funny. I was laughing that entire movie to the point where I was fully prepared to go again. Like, I would have seen that movie in theaters. I would have paid $30 or whatever for another ticket. I want to give them my money because I want them to make more movies like this. I don't care if it's a sequel, if it's, like, you know, completely disjointed, have nothing to do with the original. It's just, like the same writers, people, and whatnot coming back together, I want that. Yeah, they could... There's a lot they could do. I, I would... I wouldn't see a point in bringing back the same characters. Yeah, I feel like they, they if have they're a... they smart about I it. I mean, I guess maybe I could see more with the sorcerer and the druid, but mm -hmm. I'm happy with how all of it left off. Yeah. I, like, like... I, I'd like to see... You know, like, their second campaign. Their characters have reached level 20, yeah. now they've made new ones. And it can be the same world. It can be like Critical Role, where this is the same world as the first movie 20, 30 years later. 
So maybe you'll run into the, you know, Chris Pine's bard. Maybe you'll run into this, but maybe not. It won't matter. Or completely different world. Everything is homebrewed. Druids are different again. Like, I'll accept it. I'm excited. I want more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd just be interested in seeing them take a stab at classes they didn't do on the movie and just different characters. Because, again, there's a lot you can do in that world, especially if you're willing to not... Stick to the rule book? Well, not just that, but they also didn't get totally lost in the plot. Like, the plot is superfluous. There's a group of secret good doers who the main character was a part of and also there's these evil red wizards and this bad guy has betrayed them and boom you know like that's all like there's a city that they're gonna go to like there is books upon books upon books of lore about literally just about everything that appeared on screen mm. and they touch on none of it and that's how you should do it that's yeah. absolutely how you handle these overwhelming lore scapes you don't info dump on the viewer like well once long ago Baldur's Gate was founded by Gregory Van blah, blah, blah. and that's you know no like if you're if you're a fan of the games or the books or the gameplay you know what Baldur's Gate is if you're not it does not matter in the slightest yeah. it's the big city um and ditto with all the other locations and all the other things and the helmets and the names they drop. They even Mordenkai's name They went to drop. the Underdark. Yeah, they, they all sorts of stuff. And that's a really good writing style. And I'd love to see them take a crack at other stuff from the D&D universe using that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because they obviously did a really good... And to be fair, that's to the level that most players ever understand the D&D lore. Because again, some DM going like, oh my god, that's a lot of lore. Okay, I'm taking this, this, and this. You're going to Baldur's Gate. What's Baldur's Gate? A big city. When did it fight? I roll history. You got a 20. It's been a big city for a long time. There you go. <laughs> like, you don't usually... Like, that. again, that's a great way to introduce people to the setting because the whole point of the setting is if you want to dive into it, go nuts. If you don't want to dive into it... You don't have to. Yeah, use what you want. Take what you need and make it your own, you know? Lots of people do all sorts of slants on it, different takes. Not to mention the own, the lore contradicts itself like 80 oh, million course. different ways because it's been so long and so many changes and recent decisions on things, better and worse. Uh, so, yeah, you know, uh, it, it that's... Again, it all comes down to good writing like this is why i really like shows or movies that have good writing because it's kind of what marvel did with the comic book stuff up until recently where they went wow this is a mess we have 60 70 80 years of lore floating around about these characters through different eras with different beliefs about what's okay and what's not and different storytelling styles and what we're going to do is we're going to dust off the cool parts, we're going to put them in a coherent storyline that pays homage to the original one, and we're going to make it suitable for about a two-hour film. Not info-dump you on, you know, Zhang the Conqueror from 1832, and well, and Marvel was also willing to split it across a few movies, and I feel like they've, they're they getting shaky on their execution with this next phase, or whatever phase they're currently on. It hasn't been as elegant, um, although that's usually because there's just more filler. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we don't know what to do to fill the rest of this movie. Uh, what if we, what if we use cliches? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's a that's a whole other uh, thing. That's not yeah. on my list, I think. I'm I'm totally good with having info dumping in my video games. I hate it Even in my there, movies. I don't like it. Well, I mean, the nice thing about the video game is if you're not enjoying the the the, the dumpage, you, you just it. hit X or B and you go through it and you're done. Sometimes you have and, to hit that a lot. <laughs> yeah, see, but there are people like me who do enjoy oh, yeah. that. So I want that in my game. Like I like having a backstory for different people because it makes the world feel more real. I just but when it's in a movie, it's just tedious and it's like. It's already a two-hour movie. It feels like it's five hours because I have to remember this for later. There are very and elegant just, ways to, pro to provide plot, and I feel like a lot of games, movies, shows, whatever, aren't good at it. Mm. Just period. They're like, oh, well, I have to tell you about the history of blah, blah, blah. Like, we get maybe two info dump moments I can think of in the movie um, where we find out about oh, oh, the, Red the, the Red Wizards. Yeah, uh -huh. and, you know, a little bit more. Like, actually, probably more than two. The opening's technically an info dump, but it's done Oh, elegantly. that was one of my favorite info dumps ever, yeah. though. Because, especially with, like... Jonathan! Where's Jonathan! Jar Jonathan? Where's Jonathan? I, really he's really important him. to our meeting. I think he understand the importance of this part of the story. <laughs> um, and, you know... You and think, then the payoff at the ending! Yeah. 
It was very well done. Oh, I loved it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, what can you say? It's a good movie. Um, I, the characters are all well done. Like, it does... I don't know how to put this in quite proper terms, but to be short about it, and I know you feel much the same, I am all for modern takes on things. Like, you know, women don't have to be damsels in distresses, men don't always have to be the blob, like, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But there are many movies that handle it poorly. It feels like pandering, where rather than feeling like, oh, this is a good writing or a strong representation, or it feels like some marketing guy sat down with a focus group and said, well, the girls will eat this up, or the guys, or whoever, yeah. and so we'll do this so we can sell toys. And D&D does not feel like that, which is something I totally didn't expect, given all sorts of issues going on right now in the world, in their own world, and the early trailers even. It just feels like these are good actors, these are good characters, they are well-written, and this works perfectly, and I don't feel like anyone's pandering or bending over backwards, just like, no, this is a cool way to do the story and the character, and this is how it would have been at someone's table. Oh, yeah. You know, again, it has that really authentic feeling of, like, this feels like a group of friends are pay playing this game if you've played D&D before. And if you haven't, it's fine. You won't get that vibe, but you won't care either, because who cares? Who cares, yeah. No, I will say, the Barbarian was a woman, and she was my favorite. Yeah. And the Barbarian, you know, I was going to say usually isn't my favorite, but I really enjoyed Grog yes, in Critical say. Role. He was not my favorite, though. He wasn't. For, like, a minute he was. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, no, Keyleth is the best. But, um, she was spectacular. She was so funny. And uh, what did I say? She has low int but high wisdom. There were a lot of moments where it was like, yeah, that was a stupid thing to say, but I understand 100% why she said it. There was wisdom in that sentence. Yes. And, like, you know, there was a deer. <laughs> there was. Oh, it was wisdom. That was luck. But... Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I just, that was one of the lines that, you know, everybody was laughing at. Because it was a great line. Yeah. Like, And she had a bunch of those. Which, you know, some of the other ones, I was like, yep, that's the high wisdom coming out right there. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you typing? I'm talking to Scott. Okay, well, we're talking about D&D. Are you talking about D&D &D with Scott? I am not. This is lame. There's uh, a fat dragon in the movie. Yeah, there we go. And at one point, he, like, I don't know if he trips or he, he, he's, he falls and he is tripped, whatever. And he, he can't run anyways because he's, like, really fat. And he just starts rolling because it's a hill. Uh, I about started to cry in the movie theater. It was so funny. <laughs> she enjoyed it immensely. He wasn't my favorite, though. The Barbarian was my favorite. Yes. Everyone was very surprised to hear that. Yes. But yeah, um, I don't have any other good points. Like, uh, they do a good job with the villains. Um, the ones who are two-dimensional are two-dimensional because they need to be. The one who is not exactly two-dimensional, but just slightly better written than he needs to be, I guess, is mm -hmm. nice. Um... Yeah, it's just a. Uh, it, it's a good, it's a good movie. Would watch again. Have watched again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we watched it with your mom. Yeah. I was gonna say. So one of the things I brought it up with my mom, but you know she hasn't played since the '80s, so I don't know how much of it she really remembers, and if they did a module or if she was with someone who was homebrewing. But at the end of the movie, so spoilers. If you want to see this movie, you should go see it. It's hilarious and 100% worth it. At the end of the movie, when uh, the bard gives his daughter that that bracelet, that or no, maybe he doesn't give it to her. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Or if she just found it on her own. But one of the bracelets, when it's on you, it stops all magic. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, she, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She either is given one or she finds it. I don't remember. Yes. It doesn't matter. But the bard is obviously, you know, like I imagined when I was watching this you know, the DM and all the players at the table. And, you know, I imagine the bard was like, you know, okay, I want my daughter out of here. Like, DM, just, just give her, I give her the invisible necklace. I want her to get out. I will find her later. Please tell her to listen to me. <laughs> and then, you know, they're having this fight with the Red Wizard, and they are not doing well. 
And I feel like the DM was like, all right, um, I'm going to do a thing because otherwise this is going to be a TPK and we can't have that. And that's when the daughter comes in and gets the bracelet put on the Red Wizard and everybody's just like, oh, ha, ha, ha. and I loved it. But I could also see it as like, you know, the bard player actually let his daughter at the table and she was like, you know, she went over to the DM and was like, could I go over and put the bracelet on the wizard's wrist? And the DM's just like, oh yeah, you know, like just roll for stealth or whatever, but with advantage because you're invisible. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I love all of the ways that I can envision this actually playing out at a table. Every single one of them is really fun. Like, you know, the paladin is the, the pike character of critical role of like, mm -hmm. I can only be here for a little while, you guys, but I'll pop in and out when I can, and I'll be super helpful. <laughs> you never talked about the Paladin. Wasn't he Wasn't he your favorite? He was one of them, yeah. They did a really, really good job. Um, it was a... Uh, Lawful good. Yeah, well... In a just, good way. It was an obvious cliche, but they, they leaned into it really, really well. Yeah, um, and he it made was it very so fun. funny. In fact, they in fact straight up make fun of it because everyone else is so like the part of what makes it funny is the in-world characters are aware of how cliche this character. Oh yeah, is. the bard was totally roasting. Him. Yeah, um, and he was going right over his head. <laughs> you must be fun at parties. I am not. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so yeah, no, oh, good. really fun character. He's, he's gonna go in a straight line. Yeah. Oh, there's a rock. Is he going to go around it? No, nope. He's just going over it. Yep. Going in that straight line. <laughs> yep. uh, so yeah, it was a good movie. One of my complaints, though, was the druid was a tiefling. Oh, whatever. She just had pointy ears and a tail. She should have had horns. Or maybe she did have horns she did and they were tiny. She should have had scales. She should have had some color to her skin. She could have just yeah. put on a hat tucked her tail into her pants and gotten by it as a human Meh. or a half elf and I don't like it. Meh. I love tieflings. They are colorful. They look like devils. That's the point. We managed to they are a ostracized. D &D movie. What? Is, like we met, we actually got a good D&D movie. This is already like hitting the lottery. I don't do Oh yeah, no. I'm I'm literally nitpicking. I know, yeah. And the fact that I have to do that means this was a spectacular movie. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, I've been I've been singing the praises of this movie. I have to find something to complain about. And that was a genuine complaint that I had. Yeah. I, I came to terms with, like, no, actually, I like that the druid didn't have spells. All she could mm -hmm. do was wild shape. I actually really like that. I kind of wish I, that were a thing. That's what I've felt about D&D since the beginning, just that, you know... In games in general, when you have a choice between classes, you don't want it to be all three of these classes do the same thing, except one does it slightly differently. Mm. You want vast differences. And yes, the idea that the druid does not cast magic and just shape changes or maybe uses some of those spells as part of their thing innately would be a much better design, in my opinion, for the baseline druid. But D&D has... Decades of tradition that it's trying to overcome, mixed with all sorts of persnickety members of its community, and blah, 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 blah. Short version, that's never happening. Um, so, but yeah, I agree that their take on how to do this was way more interesting, because the spellcaster is the only one casting the spells. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, like, I think if that were to be put in the base game, you'd have to buff some animals, and you'd have to debuff others. Because, like, Keyleth, level 20, she could shape change every single turn. Yes. If you could actually do that as, you know, like a level 3 druid, you're just going to kill everything. You'd have to change the rules on it. Your health Yeah, exactly. You'd have to change some things. Because yeah. otherwise it's like, yep, you have a brand new health pool. Well, yeah. Oh, you've been knocked out of it. Shape change. You have a brand new health pool. Yeah. Like, it's... That would be super overpower. So that's why it'd be the first thing to change. That's why mm -hmm. Moon Druid's so good in the beginning anyways. But yeah. I that's mean, why what? Oh, Moon Druid. Yeah. Because yeah. they can bonus action shape change. Yeah. And so, I mean, this has always been the thing of like, what do you want your thing to do? You know, how do you make it special? If you claim that their specialty is shape changing, but you only do it every now and then because you're so limited on it and you don't want to waste it and you're like, I don't know, someone I know who hoards arrows in video games. Um, I don't do that. 
Okay, maybe not arrows, but everything else. No. Your I... first playthrough of Zelda, you ate nothing okay. but acorns. <laughs> I am playing Tears of the Kingdom right now. And you are much better. Yeah, I would like you to acknowledge that. I will gladly acknowledge it, but that's still your Acknowledge it right now. I have acknowledged it. You need to say it to them. Liz has gotten much better at not being a neurotic person who will not use any of her items in video games. Thank you. She I do, however, still save scum like no one else yes literally maybe every four to five minutes yes no regrets i'm still very happy with that because every once in a while i do something and i'm like oh crap no and then i look and i'm like oh god there's three auto saves uh, oh wait no there's my save i trust that save i don't have to worry about it i just uh who's hoarding things now what were we my talking? point is that yes in the default D D, people tend to hoard certain things because they limit them because they're not supposed to do it that often, and then they don't oh, use it. Oh, yeah, so then know. they're like, oh, I don't know if I should use the invisibility scroll right now. I should yeah. save that for later. And then somebody dies. You know, if you'd use that invisibility scroll, they'd probably be alive right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. And again, this comes back to how you design games and all this other stuff that's kind of tangential to what we're talking about. So, yeah. Should we go to another movie? I mean, we have ten minutes. What are we talking about in ten minutes? You want to do Ant-Man? Sure, because that movie was honestly a huge disappointment. Yeah. There were... Okay. What was it called? Ant-Man the... Quantumania. Quantumania. There were some scenes that were freaking hilarious. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you have Paul Rudd. You can't go wrong with Paul Rudd. But there were so many other scenes that were just so boring, so cliche, so stupid, that it was beyond frustrating. Yeah. There's a lot of he will arrive pronoun game. And oh, yeah. I can't tell you now. Let's go on a two-hour journey across this endless vist, like, with nothing better to do but talk to each other. Just, it's, it's got some excellent sing scenes. Uh, the Kang scenes are all very, very well done. They're doing a great job making Kang a villain that is actually good and could surpass what they set up with Thanos. Mm. Um, the alien designs were, were amazing. Yeah. Like, I literally, whoever came up with all that, I want them to make their own movie. Yeah. Because the, it would be spectacular. It would, Or at least it would be visually spectacular. The scene where they're in, like, the alien village is pretty funny. There's a cameo of a famous actor, which I just felt was kind of like, okay, he's here, now he doesn't matter because we want to get yet another famous actor into the Marvel lineup. Did I miss it? No. Who was it? Uh, Groundhog Day. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're See? right. See? Okay. I totally forgot about him. But no, it really felt <laughs> like they did exactly what other superhero movies did. But, well, basically DC superhero movies and earlier movies before, like Iron Man, where they didn't have a full plot. They had, like... 30 minutes of plot, and then they just padded it out to an hour 13 or two hours, and oh my god, that daughter was so... Speaking of pandering... Oh my goodness, I literally wanted to strangle her. And you know, it's not just me, like, Alex feels the same way. Well, I mean, I feel like anyone that isn't... I don't know, they're trying well, I don't to make know, her... I feel like even the woke people would be annoyed with her, because it's not, it's not genuine. Oh, yeah. you saved the world once. Okay, you haven't saved it at all, so yeah, get over yourself. Just, you don't get to talk to me like this. Are you kidding me? She's an unbelievable brat who's also an XB for like them getting to name drop current societal problems. Like, oh yeah, rent's going up and people can't... And it's like, yes, this is true. And I get that they want her to be the freedom fighter daughter or whatever. You know, I'm going to fight for the little people. They could people. have done it so much but better. But it's so stupidly done, it feels like pandering, where they're like, well, this is what the kids are into. Yeah. And it doesn't make her, like, endearing in a way that, like, oh, she's the daughter who's going to help get her father out of his slump and, you know, or maybe make him realize he's gotten too complacent or whatever. No, she's she just feels like taking Ant-Man when he's down. Yeah, well, she feels like a jerk who's just... She feels like a spoiled brat. Did I say man? She's the one kicking Ant-Man when he's Yeah, well, Continue. point being, like, yeah, she feels she's like an, an entitled brat. Yeah. yeah. Who, like, oh, well, you know, you saved the world once, but other people, and it's like, what the hell? Like, you, just, yeah, there are so many people that haven't ever saved it even half of one time. And, like, yes, maybe he's gotten, like, like there are so, I understand what they were going for, but there were a million ways you could have almost the exact same characters and do it better. That was so lazy and crummy and just a waste of time in a character so annoying and i like that actress too oh that's yeah you know that's always because it was just like 
It was the writing. It was 100% the oh, writing. Yeah. Michelle just, Pfeiffer is great. Having her say, I can't tell you, and he will cut 45 times. Seriously, the first 45 minutes of the movie, I swear to God. I wanted to strangle her even just, more than I did the daughter. Just that repeated over and over. And it's But also, such... they put Michelle Pfeiffer in way too many fight scenes. That too, yes. Okay, she is too old for this. I love Michelle Pfeiffer, all right? I made you watch that stupid Batman movie because I'm in love with that woman. I don't know what the heck they were thinking. You don't put her in a fight scene. Like, great, you know, they, they got a... Um, you can do a little, a, but you can't make like or, or whatever. Focus. But yeah. no, it's stupid. I'm never going to believe it. Like, she has freaking white hair. It didn't work. It was terrible. There's a lot that didn't work. And it's just, it's a shame because Ant-Man, more importantly, Paul Rudd is the perfect character for Marvel. He's exactly the right level of goofy and serious and capable of doing either that... At the drop of a dime. And yet they've done nothing good with the Ant-Man movies. They've no, all like been... the first one. Yeah, it, it, it's another one where I'm like, half this movie feels like it's not actually interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't I, seen it in a while. I, I Half the movie feels like a bog-standard bad superhero movie, and the other half feels okay. And that's what I've always felt about every Ant-Man movie. I think I like the second one the best, but I can't remember it, so maybe that's why. Um, Wasp. Wow. Yeah, I know, but I don't remember. I mean, him in the airport scene was great, though, right? Yeah, he's great. Because that was Paul Rudd being Paul Rudd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he gets to do stuff that he wants to. Um, but, yeah, it just, it's such a shame. Because they could do so much interesting stuff with this, and instead we're stuck with stupid little call-outs and weirdness and cliche writing, and it just doesn't feel like they're putting the level of care or detail they put into some of these other movies. Like, they did an excellent Spider-Man movie. Mm-hmm. Um, they movies, did, in my opinion. Well, yeah. Um, they did... Uh, well, sorry, I mean the third one especially, though. The, the, oh, you yeah. mean the recent movies? Yeah, the recent Okay, movie. gotcha, okay. You know, and they yes, even the original Iron Man, the uh, the first Avengers movie, the Endgame, all... The, well, not Endgame, the one before that, whatever it is. You get the point. Uh, the, the first Thanos one with yeah. the snap. Endgame's okay. Um, oh, okay. I enjoyed it, but, like, if I'm picking out really, really good ones. Oh, Doctor Strange. Oh, yeah. All and these, the sequel, too. Yeah, all these movies did a really, really good job. Okay, the sequel's its own special thing. But the others all did a really, really good job of not just relying on cliches and, oh, look, there's the thing. Mm. And this felt like cliches and, oh, look, there's the thing. Yeah. And then there's a few moments, like, heck, the ending. Paul Rudd has, like, an existential crisis about what he's done it's actually perfect like mm-hmm. it's really good especially because it's exactly the kind of vibe that wonderfully sets up how threatening their villain's supposed to be and it just reminds me what a waste he's he is in their hands just yeah uh, i wish they would write better because paul red deserves better yeah he can act so much I mean, better. Yeah. I mean, his acting was spectacular in the movies. The writing is so crappy. It's just, ugh. Like, I I don't regret watching it. I Were we able to see it for free, or do we have to rent it? We saw it on, what's it called? Disney Plus. Okay, so it, we paid through it for it through our subscription. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. If we had seen that in theaters, I would have been so mad. But especially because... If you guys have listened to any of the shows and movies that David and I have watched, lo and behold, my favorite character, he died. <laughs> yep. It was like laser targeting. I think it's one of the only characters that's remotely relevant to the story that dies. Yeah. Yep. I just zeroed in on him immediately. I was like, holy crap. He has the best design of all of the aliens, you guys. I love him. And then he, he was having fun. I was like, oh my god, I love him. He is my favorite. And then like 30 minutes later, boom! He died. And I was just like, what? What what the heck? Like, it was you and Robert, right? We watched it with Robert? What? The Ant-Man movie? I don't think we watched it with Robert. I thought it was you and me. I swear there was someone there with us, and I swear it was Robert. I thought it was Mark then. Oh, maybe it was Mark? Yeah, it definitely wasn't Robert. I'm pretty sure I talked to him about how it's not that good. Okay, then it was Mark. And we all laughed about the fact that, yep, I know how to pick them. I know how to pick a favorite character because they immediately die. It's a curse. My superpower sucks. I'd like a new one. (laughs) 
I don't like my current one. You're bad at this. I really, actually, no, I'm great at this. My superpower is like on point. My favorite character dies all the time. Do you have anything else to say about the movie? Not particularly. I'd say if you like Paul Rudd, you can see it, but yeah, I mean, it's don't not... get your hopes up. Like it, it's not as good as other Marvel. <laughs> I, I really feel like you could just cut significant portions of that movie and lose almost nothing. But oh, you, you literally get a drop confused. everything about the daughter, oh, God, and it would be so much better. Also, Modok. The big head guy with the yeah. I don't want to cut him. Some of what he did was funny. It's just a waste of a really good character. It's oh, actually another point. I thought of like, you guys were really happy with his design, at least. Well, right? yes and no. So uh, this is again back to kind of like when they try to shove in too many villains in what I would normally say would be other superhero movies, movies before the Marvel era, where they're like, oh yeah, we want to have Sandman and Green Goblin and blah 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 in this Spider-Man movie, and then you get bad versions of all of them. Mm -hmm. That's what they did to Modok there. Uh... Like it was funny the way they did it in a way because of how they decided to do it, and if you're gonna waste a character, I guess that's a good way to do it, but it's also a huge waste of a character. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a major shame because my understanding is that character is actually quite interesting, or at least could be used to much better effect than comedic relief. Mm. And he pretty really much was stupid just comedic relief. arc that again involves the daughter because the daughter gets all the bad parts. Of yeah, this his his ending arc was really lame. Yes. I kind of wish he had just like escaped and and we'd see him later. It was it was bad in a lot of directions. It was really bad. <laughs> So yeah, if you're a fan of the comics, I, I don't, I don't know you You've guys. You've probably already seen it. <laughs> <laughs> probably, and then in that case, I'm sorry. You should see the D&D movie, it's so good! And that is the end of Four Heavenly Beasts Day 64. I got five hours and four minutes of footage. So quite a bit done on this page. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the phoenix's lower beak, and this is the upper beak. The beaker beak. David's here. Hi. <laughs> Help? Am I making it better? You said beaker beak. I don't know if that's really helpful. How do you not know if I'm helpful? <laughs> making progress technically in this shot alone there are four heavenly beasts I miss the dragon already but he's over here so soon all right do you have anything you would like to say devoted um what I'd like to say want to say whatever well i mean it's a very deep question what does one want to say so i've been watching critical role <laughs> the the actual live people playing season two and it's really fun but i do not like caleb i i am not enjoying him at all i like everybody else so yeah, I am slowly making my way through that, meeting all of the new people. It is fun. And that's all that I have. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next video.